What's up, my brothers? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to save marriage. And by the way, there's ways to fix that, but really, you fix it by fixing divorce. Now, there's five things that need to happen which will repair the issues that are going on in the world today when it comes to marriage or living in a way that the state views as a marriage. I've talked about this in my book. There's a chapter on why smart men don't marry, but in this video, I wanna give you five ways that we can actually fix marriage by fixing divorce. Now, before I get into those five things, the first thing that you have to understand is there's a lot of traditional conservatives. They're known as trad cons. I call it the big con now because what they constantly do is they're always telling guys, just man up, do the right thing, Take your vows in front of the church and your family. It's not enough just to love a woman. It's hedonistic, blah, blah, blah. And they've been saying this for a long time. And what they're really trying to do is they're trying to get you to sign up for a version of marriage, which doesn't really serve. And their solution is always, well, we have to remove no-fault divorce. So essentially what no-fault divorce is, is you would be able to get divorced without proving any kind of fault, like cheating, for example. Back in the day, you couldn't file for divorce unless you could prove the fault of the other had cheated or gone outside of the marriage, and then you could apply and go through the divorce process. Now, no fault, just remove that completely. That's where we ran into problems with women just being like, well, I'm bored or I wanna find myself or whatever it happens to be and they would just untie the knot because no fault was needed. It, it wasn't necessary to prove that. But th that's not gonna fix anything and I'll tell you why very simply by using the Me Too movement as an example. We've seen for years now where women just allege that something happens and everybody believes, you know, it's believe all women. So getting rid of no fault divorce isn't gonna fix anything if we're being perfectly honest. Let's get into the first thing that actually fixes the issues that we have today. So you will fix marriage and the marriage issues with people not getting married by eliminating alimony. One of the biggest things that causes hesitation for men today to signing up for a contract like marriage is the fact they can often, for the rest of their life, even if it doesn't work out, be forced to be being alimony to somebody that they're not even with, not sleeping with, have no sexual intimacy with, no love with. They have to just continue to maintain their life. The notion of alimony is a disaster. We live in a world today where Women don't need no man, or, or a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, you know, we keep hearing this, men and women are equal, all this sorts of stuff. And in the reality of you know, the scope of the world as well, women are able to stand on their own two feet today. This isn't 100 years ago, this is today. Alimony is completely unnecessary and is one of the things that causes extreme hesitation with men having to get married because they're often forced to pay for alimony, in many cases, to a woman for the rest of their lives. I have a friend right now that's paying $40,000 a month to a woman he's not with she owns two pieces of real estate he has all the kids because she's a nutter and they all live with him and he's not able to buy any real estate because she's sitting on it right now tying it up and he's paying her 40 grand a month alimony is an incredibly bad idea when men figure out what alimony is it causes extreme hesitation when it comes to getting married so that's the first thing that you need to fix the second thing that needs to be fixed is default 50 50 custody one of the great problems in the world today is that women get about 80% of the custody orders awarded to them, and it's still true today. The vast majority of custody arrangements and cases are being awarded to women still. What that means is that women have custody about 80% of the time. They still get this awarded to them, and it makes no sense whatsoever. Men are more than capable of being a parent. In fact, it's necessary for children to have their fathers in their lives. The vast majority of teenage runaway, gang activities, pregnancies, shit grades, you can go right down the list, incarcerations all come from single mother households. When you actually compare single mother households to single father households, children raised in single father households actually do almost as well as two parent households. Children need their fathers. And when men are forced to go through custody battles to share custody, which should by default be 50-50, it's a fight that they shouldn't have to fight. And when they realize that it's something that they're potentially gonna to have to deal with, they get very discouraged and disinterested in wanting to sign up for something that is marriage or looks like marriage that the state would, might even view as marriage, common law, living together. 50-50 custody should be the default. There should be no custody battles over children. The only time that it should exist, in my opinion, is if you have a piece of garbage parent and let's say that they're a pimp or a drug uh, dealer or something you know bizarre and they're not fit to be a parent. That's the only case in which they should make an exception where the court should hear a parent present that. Aside from that, both parents are employed, both parents have their heads screwed on right, default 50-50 custody. The third thing should be no division of assets. Why are we giving away our wealth to other people that didn't work for it? Some people argue, well, prenups and this, that, and the other thing, but the reality of it is, again, you know, Men and women are now the same today. We can stand on our own two feet and 
you know, women are able to go out there and do whatever they want and earn. So why are we taking assets and then just dividing them up? Anything that was accumulated prior to the uh, marriage should stay with either side. I get to keep my shit, you get to keep your shit. No need to write any kind of a prenup or any kind of arrangement. Matrimonial assets that you both contribute to, we can still talk about dividing those, but division of assets in general should be completely off the table. You keep what's yours, you stay on your side, I keep what's mine, I stay on my side. There's no reason why any party should be enriched by the other party into perpetuity with things like division of assets or things like alimony. It's unnecessary and it's absurd. We shouldn't have to deal with that. The fourth thing, going to be a little bit controversial, and this happens at the point of marriage, especially when the children are born, is mandatory DNA testing. Cucking is a problem. Is it a huge problem? No. And it is very, very difficult to isolate the problem, the actual ratio in which it happens. I did a lot of research on this when I was writing my book, The Unplugged Alpha, and I found that the only time you could get accurate information, because paternity fraud you know, it's fraudulent and it relies on her lying essentially. Like she's not gonna tell you the truth if, if she lies about you being the father. If she sleeps with somebody else, she's not gonna say, oh, by the way, I slept with somebody else because it causes a huge headache. It causes huge, huge problems. It's often just, you know, swept under the rug. Let's just ignore it, pretend it doesn't happen. So DNA testing, paternity testing should be mandatory. As I was saying, when I was doing the research for my book, I found that anywhere from 10 to almost 30% of children that fathers think are theirs are not actually theirs. You can't survey women to get this information. Where I got the data from was essentially from medical records and from school surveys. Interestingly enough, for example, if a couple goes to a medical facility, uh, you know, for imaging, for hospital work or anything like that, and they find out that they have to do blood labs on the parents and the children to isolate what the issue is, there are certain situations where medical professionals have discovered that the father is not the biological parent of the child. And they, of course, have to deal with the mother and say, hey, you know, by any chance, did you sleep with anybody else when you got pregnant? Doesn't look like he's a father. Uh, there's some discrepancies here and depending on where you live depending on what the laws are in some cases The medical professionals aren't required to disclose this to the father So it's just hidden under the rug and I'll just say, you know, we keep it on the download sort of thing I've also seen this where in some other studies where schools were doing some uh, family tree work and by a sequence of questions and with some testing <laughs> the kids were <laughs> They're not allowed to do these anymore, but they discovered that some of the kids in close to a third of the time were not the biological children of the men that thought were the fathers of these kids. So it's deceptive by nature. You're not gonna get an honest reporting on it if you ask women. It does exist. And if you paternity test the children at birth, then there's an encouragement for fathers to get into a situation that's marriage. I think it should be standard. I know there's certain countries that, that actually at this point in time today have made paternity testing illegal, which is a crime in itself. It's just evil, right? The whole point of a father being a father is to pass on his name and his DNA, his seed, and to nurture that. Women by default know the child is theirs because they carry the seed in their stomach. It's theirs, they know that they're pregnant, but men don't by default know this. So I think it's incredibly important if you want to save things like marriage, Make sure that DNA testing is done standard at the hospital, at birth, no questions asked, and it's dealt with at that point of contact. And the fifth and final thing that will save marriage is, of course, eliminating child support in the sense where it is only given for what the child needs. In today's world, child support is awarded from one parent to the other parent, from the parent that makes more money to the parent that makes less money based on government tables. The government gets to decide how much money that child gets or needs to live on a monthly basis. Now, I've seen this happen many, many times where friends of mine or guys that I've been doing consults with punch in their information in the government website and they discover today they're paying or their average cost monthly is, let's say $1,000 to take care of extracurriculars, swimming lessons, clothing, lunches, after school care, you know, whatever it happens to be. And then they go through the divorce grinder because she gets bored and wants to get out. And he finds out he has to pay her like $4,218 a month because the table says that. That's not what the kid needs to survive. The vast majority of that money goes to mom. It doesn't go to the child. It doesn't go to taking care of the child. It goes to her. So she can unjustly enrich herself by being the custodial parent this is where the 50-50 you know, deals with this as well. But if she's a custodial parent, has a kid 80, 90% of the time, she'll actually get more money by being the custodial parent. So when you default to 50-50, you solve that problem, plus 
her getting extra money that's unnecessary for looking after the child, for parenting the child. Give the other parent what's necessary if there's any kind of balance payment that needs to be made, but what's necessary and what the child requires. Proof of receipt should be generated as far as what the monthly costs are, not just manufactured out of thin air. Oh, I need $4,000. Okay, what are the receipts? What are the costs? And then it's dealt with in that level. Now, if you fix these five things, I guarantee the vast majority of men out there saying, I don't want to get married, I don't want to involve the state, I don't see the point in having children today, let me go get a vasectomy in my 20s or some nutty thing like this. All of that, for the most part, will go away because it solves the vast majority of the problems that have been created by the government that have introduced all of these silly things into people's homes. People, you, Your home is your castle. When you have a family, you should be the head of the household. Men have been removed from the head of the household over a sequence of decade after decade of laws and things that have changed, which have essentially put the government and women at the head of the household with these laws and legislation, which take away a lot of the incentives for men to get down on one knee and say, will you marry me? You wanna fix marriage? You fix it by fixing a lot of the stupid divorce laws, and you also fix it by introducing mandatory DNA testing at the point of birth at the hospital. You guys tell me what you think, comment below, leave a like. Also pin in the top comment, bunch of useful links to stuff that I'm affiliated with, like my book, my courses, and a whole bunch of other stuff. See you guys later, peace out. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.